Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for April the 15th, 2013. Happy tax day to everybody here. Um, as a reminder for all of those in the audience, we are glad to have you with us tonight. And if you do have a cellular device, please put it on silent or vibrate. Uh, we are broadcasting live right now on channel 22. Um, for those of you that are going to address the commission, uh, the microphone is here. If you will face us and speak into the microphone, it will pick you up for the TV audience at home. You may need to adjust the microphone up or down. I always have to adjust it down, but some of you are a good bit taller than me, like the county manager, so you might want to adjust it up when you're up there. Um, we always like to start our meetings with our presentation of colors, and we are pleased to welcome Girl Scout Cadet Troop 112 from All Saints Episcopal Church in Concord tonight to present our colors. Please rise. Color Guard, attention. Color Guard, advance. Color Guard present colors. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color guard dismissed. Next, we have our invocation. So I'd like to welcome Pastor Mark Weathers from Providence Presbyterian Church in Concord to join us at the podium. After our invocation, if you please will remain standing, we do need a moment of silence um, tonight that we also want to recognize. Pastor, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And as our hearts go out to those victims of family, families of victims in Boston, I thought tonight a wonderful prayer invoking God's presence should be taken from St. Francis of Assisi. Let's pray. Our Father, I pray that you would make this group to be an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let them sow love. Where there is injury, let them sow pardon. Where there is doubt, let them sow faith. Where there is despair, let them sow hope. Where there is darkness, let them sow light. Where there is sadness, let them sow joy. O Divine Master, grant that they may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you. Um, we have a couple <coughs> folks, uh, local folks that we would like to remember that, um, that we have lost uh, during this last month. Uh, Ralph Bonds was a register of deeds for a long time. I don't know how long no, he was there, Judah. He was a county commissioner. I'm sorry, he was a county commissioner. My, sorry, I, my apologies, I was thinking of someone else. Um, he was a county commissioner. Do you know when, offhand? I do not have Okay. And um, Dr. Joe Freeze, some of you know Freeze Middle School. Um, the school was named after him. He also passed away recently. And, of course, I'm sure if any of you uh, tweet or on Facebook or any other social media, you've heard of the tragedy today at the Boston Marathon. So at this time, if we could all go um, and have a moment of silence in remembrance of Ralph Bonds, Dr. Joe Freeze, and um, the people up in Boston. Thank you all. You may be seated. I'd like to ask that all the Girl Scouts, here you are, ladies, if you will please come back up here to the podium. 
all of you come on. And you may need to, yeah, I always have to pull it way down whenever I'm over there. What we'd like for you to do, one at a time, if you'll step up to the microphone, um, let us know your name, let us know what school you go to and what grade you're in, and I'd like to know what you think is the most fun thing that you do by being a Girl Scout. Okay? Do you want to start? And once you do that, Commissioner Burridge has a pen for you that he would like to give to you after you tell us who you are. I'm Faith Frizzy. I go to Odell, W.R. Odell Elementary, and... My favorite thing in Girl Scout is camp. And what grade are you in, dear? Fourth grade. Fourth grade. Thank you very much. My name is Olivia Size, and I go to CIS, Carolina International School. I'm in third grade, and my favorite thing to do is in Girl Scouts is go to camp. Great. Thank you. My name is Aurelis Duran. I go to Harris Road Middle School. I am in seventh grade. My favorite thing in Girl Scouts is camping. Great. Thank you. I'm a Dallas Duran. I go to Cox Mill High School, and my favorite thing to do is um, camp, and I'm in grade nine. Great. Thank you. My name is Jayla Todd. I go to WRO Elementary School. I'm in fifth grade, and my favorite thing to do is camping. Thank you. I'm Anna Coley. I go to WROD Elementary School. I'm in fifth grade, and my favorite thing to do is, in Girl Scout is to help others. Thank you very much. We appreciate all the girls. Can everybody here give them a, a round of applause? <laughs> and I hope that their counselors have plenty of tents that are waterproof, and tis the season for snakes, I found out over the weekend, which is my least favorite thing in the world. So I hope that you don't have to deal with any of that when you go camping, ladies. Thank you all for being here. Um, the first uh, agenda item that we have, commissioners, is approval or correction of the meeting minutes. Um, you have a number of um, minutes in your packet. So at this time, are there any corrections to the minutes? If not, I would accept a motion that the minutes be approved as presented. So moved. I have a motion and I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hey, next you have the uh, agenda, approval of the agenda, including um, changes. Uh, we have, let's see, just I think some reorganization that we did from the, um, at our uh, work session. So at this time, uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda, including the changes? Second. I have, I have a motion and I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. First up, next up, we have recognitions and presentations. Um, Frank Lapsley, is he here? There you are. Uh, Mr. Lapsley is the um, director, general manager. general manager, sorry, for the Arena and Event Center. Sorry, I was having a brain moment. So, welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, Thank you again for letting us be on your agenda this evening. Uh, this is the third year in a row we have worked with the Cabarrus County School Systems uh, and uh, mirrored a program that the um, schools you in which they use in which they select an art uh, recipient or an artist from each of the different grade levels, one elementary, one middle, one high school. Um, the third year in a row, we, you have allowed us to uh, call the uh, winners, the Commissioner's Select Award. Uh, Pam Sosserman from our staff, in addition to all the other things she does, helped spearhead this for us, and she's done a great job with it. Uh, with your permission, I'd like to introduce you to our three artists and show you their artwork. My name is Lorelai Richards. Um, my parents are Amy and Pete. Um, I live in Concord. Um, I go to A.T. Allen Elementary School and um, fifth grade. My teacher's name is Miss Myers. And um, I did this piece of artwork with um, ink and Styrofoam and paint. Okay. 
Okay. Questions? Thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's amazing. That's great artwork. Thank you. Mom and Dad, where's Mom and Dad? Stand up for us. There's Dad. There's Mom. Okay. We want to make sure you get recognized too. <laughs> I'm Melina Esquivel, and my parents are Ernesto and Lucia Esquivel. They're back there supporting me. I'm very glad. And I live in Concord here, um, and I go to Winkler, Harold E. Winkler Middle School, and I'm in eighth grade. My art teacher, Ms. Lori Earnhardt, which is, she's amazing, and I'm really happy to have her. Um, I drew this baby, and it took me, I'm pretty sure, like about an hour to do. And, really? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I used pencil and charcoal. And, well, I really like babies, so I decided to do this piece. <laughs> Did you draw from a picture or did you draw from a baby that you know? Oh, I saw a picture on the internet. That's amazing. And mom and dad, there we go. There we go, over here and back there. Thank you, mom and dad. Our last piece. My name is Brennan Moody and my parents are Miles and Lynn Moody. I live in Concord, and I'm a senior at J.M. Robinson High School. My art teacher is Miss Jackson, and this is an acrylic piece, and I was experimenting with a lot of different techniques like splatter and the kind of dripping effect, and I basically just planned it out on Photoshop before I actually put it on there. and. That's how it turned out. Uh, since you're a senior, I presume you drove, but were your parents here? Actually, I didn't drive. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just winging it. Mom, stand up. Parents, stand up. And also the art teachers that are here, will you stand up? Because we need to see the art teachers. There you go. We'll take just you. They're all great. I bet you time. had a hard time making a selection. We, we work with the arts teachers who helped us select who they were. So we'll have these framed up and hung up in the arena shortly. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. We appreciate your hard work. It's amazing. I can't draw a square that looks like much. Um, and for all the teachers out there, we appreciate all the hard work that you do. And parents, it's your support that makes all the difference. We all know that. So thank you all. Um, next, we have Dennis Testerman for Soil and Water Conservation District Regional Conservation Contest winners. Welcome. Good evening. It's good to be back. I was here, I think, two months ago after our local contest, and we uh, had folks that did quite well at the regional contest. We're uh, about a dozen counties in our region, and Mecklenburg County hosted that this year. So um, I think we've got all but maybe two here tonight. Um, so the, the theme again this year for our um, poster, essay, and public speaking contest and PowerPoint contest was Water the Cycle of Life. Um, in addition tonight, we've got two Envirothon teams. That's a, a team competition for high school and middle school students, and we have a, a one team in each, gra um, each school level here with us tonight that um, went to a regional event at Catawba College and placed in the top seven and therefore qualified to go to the state event, which starts on Friday and finishes up on Saturday. So in our annual poster contest, um, Elijah Crisco came in second place at our regional level. And I thought he was here tonight, but I don't see him coming forward. Um, from Jackson Park Elementary School, and also from Jackson Park Elementary School in the fourth grade, um, Lainey Gregg came in second place at the regional contest. At the, uh, in the fifth grade, Abigail Brewer from Patriots Elementary, her poster won first place, so she'll be advancing to the state contest. Would you like to come up so folks can see Come on you? over towards the microphone so we can make sure we get you on camera. 
And I take it we have, who else do, did you bring with you tonight? My mom and my dad. That would be those over there, okay. Good. And in the sixth grade we have um, Caroline Beers from Harris Road Middle School who came in third place at the regional level. So Caroline's with us here tonight. Uh, then in our um, essay contest, Rosalind Diffenbach was unable to be with us tonight. She came in third place at the regional contest. In the computer design slideshow contest, Madeline Barfield from Harris Road Middle School came in first place and will also, her entry will be going on to the state level. And we have her tonight. And uh, do you have somebody here with you tonight? So glad to have you all with us. Then in our public speaking contest uh, in the seventh grade, Hannah Monroe came in first place and will be going on to the state contest. Hannah's with us here tonight. And who was with you tonight? Your mom's here with you. Great. And then in the eighth grade, uh, also unable to be here tonight, is Olivia Reef from Concord Middle School that came in second place. And then, as I mentioned before, we have two Envirothon teams. First, we have the Cannon School Llamas. If you, how many we have tonight? Two of you? If y'all would come on down so we can get a better look at you. Can you explain what an Envirothon is? I can explain what an Envirothon is. This competition is a North American competition. It's actually the largest environmental competition on the continent of North America for high school students. In North Carolina, we do a middle school as well to give them more years to prepare. They work together as a team of up to five members and they have a big old thick study uh, packet that would rival some of the materials that you get in preparation for some of your meetings, sort of like the budget packet or something like that. And it covers aquatics, current environmental issues, forestry, soils, and wildlife. So they have a lot of information to digest. The um, high school teams also have an oral presentation that they do. So as a matter of fact, the other team that you're getting ready to meet was over at our office today practicing one last time for their oral presentation. So um, why don't you all step up and tell folks who you are. Okay, um, I'm Mimi Wahid, and I go to Cannon School and I'm in the eighth grade and I do forestry on the team. I'm Lindsay Turbyfill from Cannon School. I'm in eighth grade, and I do soils on the team. And we also have their advisor, Lee Freer, who's sitting back in the back there. Did any parents or anybody come with you all? My, my mom. Okay. And my parents back there. It takes support from all these folks to make, make this happen. Um, and then at the um, high school level, we have from Northwest Cabarrus High School, the Vernonators. And if you all would step on up. And we've got four out of five here tonight. You tell them who you are. Hello, I'm Nolan Sutherland from Northwest Paris High School, and I do the current environmental issues part of a Virathon. Hello, my name is Connor. I am from Northwest Paris High School. I'm a junior. I do the soils portion of Envirothon. Hello, my name is Gregory Sheets, and I am the team's wildlife expert. Hi, my name is Kylie Riddle, and I am a senior at Northwest, and I am the forestry portion of Envirothon. The first team that you heard from, first Envirothon team, they came in seventh place, and the team from Northwest Cabarrus High School came in first place. Uh, it's the first time we've ever had a team come in first place at our regional level, so. Um, we'll be back maybe in May with uh, an update on how these folks have done at the next level. Or, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we wish you all well as you continue to compete. Thank you all very much. Let's see. Pam Dubois is going to um, do the next one. Christopher Bullard. Christopher would like to come forward. Please come forward. He's bearing his awards with them. Uh, this is for our communications and outreach department. Uh, 
They were awarded the 2013 North Carolina City County Communicator Awards. They were received for the Cabarrus Weeks program and the Hunger Games Community Read promotional video. And Christopher, our Channel 22 senior producer, uh, has a lot to do with editing and producing those uh, documents and um, videos for us. And for those who don't have Channel 22, they can also be viewed on our website so that any, everybody has access to this information. I'll let Christopher tell a little bit about these awards. They continue to win awards every year, so we're quite proud of them. Thank you. Um, yes, these are the two awards that we won at the uh, North Carolina City and the County Communicators uh, event that we just had in March. Um, one for Cabarrus This Week, uh, which was a hot air balloon segment that we did, and the other one was for the Hunger Game Community Read. Yep, there she is right there waving. Um, so it, we are just excited to, um, to win these awards. We do very great work. Um, I can attest to that. Um, with Kasha and David in the background right now, um, we just want to say thank you to you all for your support. And um, to the community, we want to say thank you for your support as well. I'll look up at the camera for that one, say thank you for that. And um, we just look to do more work and do uh, more great work for the County of Cabarrus. Well, I have to say, sometimes the, the main reason I know that you're here is because he's the one speaking into my earbud, telling, counting down um, when we're going to start, or telling me that I didn't turn a microphone on or something like that. But um, that's what that's our interaction during all of our meetings. But um, I know that all the other commissioners will agree. Uh, my husband picks on me because I'll get home and put it on Channel 22 and see which thing you're talking about that's going on in the community. Right. And I'm amazed at how many people talk about the shows that they see. So I'm glad that you got recognition from someplace other than just right here in, yeah. in Cabarrus County. Thank you very Thank much. You. And congratulations. And these will be displayed downstairs underneath the monitor. So Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Uh, next, I'm going to ask Kelly Sifford to come up and Shannon Johnson. Good evening. We are very pleased to be here tonight to recognize Shannon uh, for receiving the Outstanding Contributions to Local Sustainability, Local Economy 2013 Award. Sustained Charlotte awarded the honor to Ms. Johnson based on her implementation efforts with our Think Cabarrus First program and organizational efforts that started with the first statewide local economy summit uh, for North Carolina, as well as the Slow Food uh, Money uh, North Carolina Charlotte chapter. Sustained Charlotte is a nonprofit organization that strives to advance the region wide sustainability. And so, with that, this is Shannon's award. Thank Very you. proud of her. <laughs> Made out of sustainable bamboo. Just want to let you know. <laughs> Do you want to plug, you want to say something a little bit well, about Think Bears First? Or? Yes. Uh, Think of Bears First has been a lot of work, and it's going to be a whole lot more work on my own personal time. And I appreciate every one of you supporting it and your future support. And I think that the work that's been done by the council and the work that's been done in the community here is commendable. And being at this event and realizing how many people around the region are working so hard in all these different areas was really inspiring. So it just shows me there's so much more to do to make our community really successful. So thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, we have a number of proclamations, commissioners, that, that are for our adoption. Um, the first one that we have is the Older Americans Month of May 2013. Um, so we have a proclamation, whereas Cabarrus County Senior Center's Advisory Council is committed to the 47,104 Cabarrus County older adults and adults with disabilities ages 60 and older projected as of July 1st, 2025. And whereas Cabarrus County Senior Center's Advisory Council is committed to valuing all individuals and recognizing their ongoing life achievements, and whereas the older adults and adults with disabilities in Cabarrus County play an important role by continuing to contribute experience, knowledge, wisdom, and accomplishments, and whereas our older adults and adults with disabilities are active community members involved in volunteering, mentorship, arts and culture, and civic engagement, and whereas recognizing the successes of Cabarrus County older adults and adults with disabilities and encouraging their ongoing participation and further accomplishments, and whereas our community can provide opportunities to allow older adults and adults with disabilities to continue to flourish 
by emphasizing the importance of older adults and their leadership by publicly recognizing their continued achievements, presenting opportunities for older adults to share their wisdom, experience, and skills, recognizing older adults as a valuable asset and strengthening the Cabarrus County communities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim May 2013 to be Older Americans Month. We urge Cabarrus County citizens to take this time Take time this month to recognize older adults, adults with disabilities, and the people who serve and support them as vital citizens who greatly contribute to the community. At this time, commissioners, do I have a motion to adopt the proclamation? So moved. I have a motion and I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next one that we have is um, Guardian Ad Litem Child Advocate Month. It's April of 2013. Whereas the North Carolina Guardian Ad Litem Program, celebrating 30 years of child advocacy, has established a distinguished record of public service through its work to enhance the quality of life for abused and neglected children, and whereas Cabarrus County has a Guardian Ad Litem Program, and whereas Guardian Ad Litem volunteers come from a variety of professional, educational, and ethnic backgrounds, acting as advocates for abused and neglected children in the complicated and often unfamiliar court and child welfare, welfare systems, and whereas the court appoints guardian ad litem advocates to serve as officers of the court, helping to improve the quality of information presented by acting as the court's eyes and ears in the child's life, and whereas April has been proclaimed Child Abuse Prevention Month, an observance that reflects the purpose of the guardian ad litem program to protect and defend children from harm and ensure that ab abused and neglected children are provided with the court-ordered services they need, and whereas April is recognized annually in the United States as a time to honor the contributions guardian ad litem child advocates that have donated more than 491,000 hours of service to children in North Carolina in 2012, now be it resolved that the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim April 2013 to be guardian ad litem child advocate month. We urge Cabarrus County citizens to seek enhanced quality of life and safety for abused and neglected children in our community to reflect on the service volunteered by child advocates and thank those who are already volunteering their time and effort. At this time, I'd accept a motion to adopt the proclamation. So moved. Second. I have a motion and I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Next, we have Cabarrus County Emergency Services Week proclamation. Whereas emergency, excuse me, emergency medical services are a vital public service, and whereas the members of emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury, and whereas emergency medical services teams consist of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, and others, and approximately two-thirds of all emergency medical services provided are volunteers, and whereas the members of emergency medical services teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills, and whereas Americans benefit daily from the knowledge and skills of these highly trained individuals, and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical service providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week. And now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 19th through 25th, 2013, as Cabarrus County Emergency Medical Services Week. At this time, I accept a motion to adopt the proclamation. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the next is Child Abuse Prevention Month. Whereas children are vital to our state's future success, prosperity, and quality of life, as well as being our most vulnerable assets, whereas all children deserve to have the safe, stable, nurturing homes and communities they need to foster their healthy growth and development, whereas child abuse and neglect is a community res responsibility affecting both the current and future quality of life of a community, whereas communities that provide parents with the social support, knowledge of parenting and child development, and concrete resources they need to cope with stress and nurture their children, ensure all children grow to their full potential, whereas effective child abuse prevention strategies succeed because of partnerships created among citizens, human service agencies, schools, faith communities, healthcare providers, civic organizations, 
law enforcement agencies, and the business community, now therefore be it resolved that the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim April 2013 as Child Abuse Prevention Month and call upon all citizens, community agencies, faith groups, medical facilities, elected leaders, and businesses to increase their participation in our efforts to support families, thereby preventing child abuse and strengthening the communities in which we live. At this time, I accept a, a motion to adopt the proclamation. I have a motion. Second. And second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And one more proclamation, National Library Week. Whereas libraries are the heart of their communities, whereas librarians work to meet the changing needs of their communities, including providing resources for everyone and bringing services outside of library walls, whereas libraries and librarians bring together community members to enrich and shape the community and address local issues, whereas librarians work to meet the changing needs of their users, including building collections, expanding services, and increasing programming, whereas our nation's libraries provide a forum for diverse ideas and points of view that help us better understand each other and ourselves, whereas librarians are trained professionals helping people of all ages and backgrounds find and interpret the information they need to live, learn, and work in a challenging economy, whereas libraries are part of the American dream, places for education, opportunity, and lifelong learning, whereas libraries continuously grow and evolve in how they provide for the needs of every member of their communities, whereas libraries, librarians, library workers, and supporters across America are celebrating National Library Week, now therefore the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaim National Library Week April 14th through 20th, 2013, and encourage all residents to visit the library this week to take advantage of the wonderful library resources available at your library and accept a motion to adopt the proclamation. So moved. I have a motion and I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, next we have, oops, one more, sorry, I spoke too soon. Soil and Water Stewardship Week. Ned, where is Ned? There you are. If Ned Hudson would like to, to come up, I'm gonna read the proclamation while you come up. Um, whereas fertile soil and clean water provide us with our daily sustenance, and whereas effective conservation practices have helped provide us a rich standard of living, and whereas our security depends upon healthy soil and clean water, and whereas stewardship calls for each person to help conserve these precious resources, therefore we do hereby proclaim April 28th to May the 5th, 2013, Soil and Water Stewardship Week. Do I have a motion to adopt the proclamation? So moved. Have and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Hudson, it's nice to see you. Good to be here, and we appreciate the opportunity. I am Ned Hudson, Secretary of Treasurer of the Cabarrus Soil and Water Conservation District. Our Chairman, Jeff Goforth, Vice Chair Vicki Porter, and Robert Brown, our elected leaders, uh, to elect the Board of Commissioners. Louis Suther and I are appointed by the State Soil and Water Conservation Commission, which is currently chaired by our own Vicki Porter. Our, con our conservation district board and staff serve both the incorporated and unincorporated areas of Cabarrus County. On August the 28th, we will be officially kicking off a year-long celebration for, of our 50th anniversary as a single county district, and we hope you'll join us at our banquet that evening. According to the 2010 Cabarrus County Community Survey Public Opinion Poll, Residents rank protecting water quality and the environment as top priority for county leaders. Our district exists to encourage the informed and responsible stewardship of the land and all its natural resources. This vision is echoed by our first goal in your strategic plan, namely, preserve and enhance the quality of life by addressing growth and sound public policies that sustain resources, provide high quality services, and fund infrastructure needs. Our focus is on green in infrastructure, and we, and our approach <clears throat> to environmental stewardship is locally led and voluntary. We are actively engaged in addressing the following four strategic priorities. Uh, community conservation, conservation education, land use planning and conservation easements, and farmland preservation. One of our major accomplishments in community conservation this year 
was a nearly $1 million project to restore and protect wetlands at the, on the Coxmill Elementary School campus. Eight of the students you recognized earlier are representing our district in state conservation contests this year. We now own or hold conservation easements on 128 acres, and with your support, we are setting a goal of protecting an additional 100 acres per year with conservation easements. Cabarrus Soil and Water Conservation District encourages each and every citizen to think about his or her personal responsibility to be a good steward of natural resources during our annual Soil and Water Stewardship Week observance. The National Association of Conservation Districts has proclaimed April the 28th through May the 5th, 2013 as Stewardship Week, making the 58th year of this national, ev national event. The 2013 stu uh, Stewardship Week theme is, Where Does Your Water Shed? Through conservation agreements and conservation plans on cropland, forest land, and grassland, we are working to ensure the sustainability of food and fiber production in our county. Environmental stewardship involves personal and social responsibility, including a duty to learn about and improve natural resources as we use them wisely, leaving a rich legacy for future generations. Being good stewards of our national resources at home and in our communities is an important responsibility of each and every citizen. Our conservation board and staff look forward to our continued partnership with you in improving the quality of life in Cabarrus County. Thank you very much, appreciate your support. Thank you very much, Mr. Hudson. We appreciate you coming out tonight. They always come up with nice catchy phrases. Uh, next up we have informal public comments. And first up we have Price Crutchfield. Uh, this senior community service employment program, Title V, I applied there two years ago. And uh, according to this, doesn't say anything about you'll have to wait two years and still not have a job over there. As a college graduate, I think I got something to offer. See, it's here I can offer this, do this, and do that. I, I followed up six months later. Oh, Mr. Crutchfield, there's 35 people ahead of you. I'm having a rough time with this one. Then about six months later, I followed up again. Oh, got about 40 people ahead of you, Mr. Crutchfield. Here it is, two years later, I can't get a job cleaning commodes. What did he go to college for? To stare at you people and complain? Anyway, um, that's, that said, Scott Newell, he's a captain on the Concord Police Force. He broke the law and lied under oath in court on me to Judge Hamby. He told Judge Hamby under oath that I came into restaurants and harassed his family. We don't need police like this in Concord who lie under oath and waste the taxpayers' money and deceive the taxpayers of this city and this county. We need responsible police. We've got too many unsolved murders for these high-ranking police officials like Captain Scott Newell with the Concord Police Force who can just lie under oath and say, your Honor, he's come into restaurants and harassed my family. My position is, and I maintain, that I've never came into any restaurants and harassed anybody's family. This man's a liar, and why something hasn't been done about this is beyond me. I think it's time for the Attorney General to get involved in this. I'm a nobody. I'm unempowered. Here we got the Concord Police Department. They got millions of dollars. And anything they say obviously is the truth, and anything I say is obviously a lie. But all one would have to do is look at the public record of the many times I've been arrested. Look at the disposition of the court. Look at the outcomes. Something doesn't add up. Clearly, I've been singled out, number one, because of my religion. They don't like Muslim people around here. I must be a terrorist. Well, I'm not a terrorist. Remember Nixon? I'm not a crook. Well, I'm not a terrorist. Now, I'm not a good Muslim. I admit, I don't pray five times a day, but I wouldn't be a good Jew or a good Christian either or a good carnival worker. I'm just old low-life trailer trash. In fact, the Muslim people, were, sometimes they, uh, what are you doing at our mosque? They don't like me either. Nobody likes me. But anyway, the police lead the game on that. 
that you know sometimes you got to you, you got to show that you can be a leader well they've been a leader and showing everybody how not to like Crutchville when they lie on their oath on me in court Captain Scott Newell lied on me in court to Judge Hamby I need help God bless America Thank you. Next up, we have Joanne White Widenhouse. Welcome. Thank you. If you need to adjust that like I do, you're welcome to pull that microphone down just a little bit. Thank you. I am here for my brother, William Scott White. He is now under the Commissioner's Directive Services Program, CDS, I think it's called. And I have some photographs of him. I wonder if y'all would look at them, please. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. My name is Joanne White Widenhouse. I'm a Cabarrus County native, and I'm proud to say that I've lived and worked in this county my entire life. I am here today on behalf of my brother, William Scott White. He is 68 years old, lives alone in Concord. He is a widower and has one son. Scott had polio at age eight. He was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy around 1972. Shortly afterwards, he became unable to work and went on disability. For some time, he was able to care for himself for the most part. However, over the years, his condition has progressively gotten worse, much worse, to the point now where he literally has use of only his left arm. He is able to eat with one hand and to care for only the most basic functions. For the past five to six years, he has relied on the Cabarrus County Department of Aging for assistance. This assistance has been a huge help to him and to our family. Although the Department of Aging no longer exists and now comes under the umbrella of this new Commissioner's Directed Service Program, we're so thankful that his assistance has continued. We have recently been informed by Cindy Smart staff at Human Services that the entire program is to be cut, apparently by you, the Cabarrus County Commissioners. I cannot impress upon you enough this tremendous impact that will have upon my brother. The program as it is has allowed us to hire an individual to come into his home and assist him 18 hours a week at the rate of $7.25 an hour for a yearly total of $8,400. This assistance is very, things that have allowed Scott to stay in his home in these ways. Her duties are, she shops and prepares all the meals, cleans up afterwards, prepares all medication and assists him in taking the meds. She bathes and dresses him, assists him in and out of bed and his wheelchair. This assistance allows Scott to be in comfort of his home environment. It also allows him almost complete mobility as he can move in and around the home in the wheelchair. The person assisting Scott helps him to get ready to be transported to and from all doctor's appointments, averaging two to three times monthly. All of these things combine to give Scott the freedom to stay in his own home and allows him to measure freedom and independence. If funding for this great program is dropped by my brother, we'll surely have to go in a full-scale nursing home. And that way he would lose his independence and it would be a tremendous cost to the Medicare system, uh, much more than $8,400 a year. Most of us have our own doctors who have treated us for years and we wish to remain with those trusted persons as long as possible. Loss of this funding would likely result in a loss of his medical doctors as much facilities have their own in-house doctors. His current caregiver is the mother of three and she would certainly lose her job. As I recall, when the Cabarrus County Department of Aging was dissolved last year, County government and this very board made many promises, one of them being that services absolutely would not be lost. To cut this funding would be the very opposite of this statement. William Scott White is a real person with real needs. The dollar amount is certainly not small, though it may be small compared to the entire budget. To our family, this dollar amount is what allows us to breathe easier, allow us to sleep better at night, most of all, it allows Scott the ability to remain secure in his own home for perhaps a few more years. To simply brush him off lightly would be knowing 
without knowing anything of his situation would be a great disservice to him and others like him. Please consider your actions with your heart as if this were your brother or your father. I speak to this board today, not only for my brother Scott and our family, on a humanitarian level, I speak to you also on behalf of the other five Cabarrus County citizens that benefit from this program. We elected you to represent all the citizens, so please represent all of us, even the little people. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I don't know if there's if there are four of you that are coming up to speak. Rick Starnes, Alice Deal, Ralph Deal, Dave Goodman, are all of you? One of you coming up, or we'd, like, we'd each like to speak. Okay, um, if you all come up together, because it's listed as the Astronomical Society of Rowan Cabarrus. Godman, uh, Dave Godman. I'm sorry, apologize. Um, usually when we recognize the group, we do about five minutes for the whole group. So if y'all can kind of tag team with each other, that would be great. Well, I'll make mine fast. Uh, okay, thank we, you. We are members uh, of the uh, Astronomical Society. And uh, we, uh, several weeks ago, I contacted uh, uh, Carolyn Carpenter, school board member, in reference to the Planetarium of Central Cabarrus about its status. Uh, she, she wasn't sure. Um, uh, later on that week that uh, we had talked, they had a uh, workshop, and uh, after the workshop, she got back with me, and I had a meeting with Dr. Shepard. And he said that was being discussed now about uh, uh, reactivating the planetarium at Central Cabarrus High School. Um, we uh, understand that there serious consideration is being given to that. We would like to see it going. I have talked to Commissioner Meesmer, who was a student out there, and uh, I was surprised to hear that it was operating up until 2005. Uh, today, um, we met with uh, Lynn uh, Wiki, and uh, who is the facilities uh, executive director, and I had talked to uh, County Manager Mike Downs earlier last week, and he arranged this meeting today, which I, I really appreciate, Mike. And everyone I've talked with, from Dr. Shepard uh, to school board members to commi uh, county commissioners, uh, are all interested in this, uh, this endeavor of bringing back this facility. We looked at it today, and it is all original equipment, and it is about 47 years old, probably near 50 years old. And uh, so it's, uh, we've, uh, Mr. Godman, uh, who's a member of our uh, Astronomical Society, had worked for a planetarium in Roanoke, Virginia for over 10 years. So he was able to give some recommendations to Mr. Owicki today. So we hope that the county commissioners will take a look at this. There is going to be some assessment that needs to be made. Probably some companies come in and, and give you some bids or whatever. But uh, it's going to be a choice of either scrapping what we got, trying to make work with what we've got, uh, or go with digital as uh, compared to analog, and that is old analog stuff. But uh, we certainly would appreciate your consideration for funding of this project at the uh, commissioner's meeting next month. Thank you. I'm Ralph Deal, and I've been in the, the astronomy club for almost 32 years. And actually, I started being interested in astronomy from the time I was at the age of nine. And growing up, I had epilepsy. And so, dad and mom took five of us kids out to watch Sputnik come across. Well, that got my mind off of what I was having to deal with. And so I've been into it ever since. So I feel like if we can get this going over at Central Cabarrus, it'd be great because the kids this day and time are our future. I'm Alice Deal, and I'm the president of the club. And we will back anything that you all decide. We do hope that you will decide to go ahead and do something with the planetarium because, as you see, the shirt I have on is a light pollution shirt. And light pollution is getting to be a big problem now with our sky. And if we don't have the planetariums, 
our kids are not going to know what the sky looks like. But if we get this one up and going, and we use old equipment, they'll see what the sky actually looks like. So we hope that y'all will back us. Well, thank you for letting us speak. How do I follow that? <laughs> um, as I said, my name is Dave Godman, and I've recently moved to the area, and I've joined this club, exciting group there. Uh, I've been a planetarium educator for 10 years. I've been in the uh, Southeast Regional Planetarium Association for over 10 years. I've seen a lot of planetariums, small ones, school ones, huge science centers. They're all different, but they try to teach the same thing. The, the value of science, the beauty of the night sky, and other things related to the Earth. And I tell you what, we, you can't keep kids, especially elementary kids, away from the stars, away from astronomy. Astronomy is a little hard to teach. It's tricky because usually it's taught in a square room on a flat surface in the daytime. The planetarium is an ideal room. It's set up as a dome like the sky appears to us. You've got a machine dedicated to that. And so it can extremely uh, perfectly be used for that. I like to say a planetarium is not a magic room. It's a marvelous room. It's where young folks and, and older folks, those of us with lifetime learning, we're learning every day, and uh, we try to make it, not make believe, but as real as possible. That's the goal there. Um, children and adults come in expecting to learn when they walk into a planetarium. It's a different kind of room. It's just that obvious when they, they walk in the door. I think because, as, as I've learned in, as, in the site visit today, Cabarrus High is a STEM school. Science, technology, engineering, math. Nothing beats that like a planetarium as a home base. It, and as we saw it today, it's a little rough around the edges. It's been closed up as a planetarium for years. It's still used as a classroom. The star ball is down in its elevator in its box. It's got dust and dirt on it. That can be taken care of. Possibly that one could be reconditioned. Those things are workhorses. They're still, there's one up in Salisbury. They're giving a show Saturday night, two shows, same exact machine. Probably the same age, and yet well taken care of. Uh, the sky's beautiful. If you get a chance to go up there Saturday, check it out. Um, I, I fell in love with astronomy uh, early in my college career and wondered why I didn't know this before know how the sky moved, how the earth moved, how things looked. So I was glad to learn that and have spent the last 40 years helping other people to learn it. Our clubs, we enjoy getting out, uh, showing people the sky. This Saturday night at Carolina Mall, we'll have a star party out by the food court, telescope set up. We, we drag people off the street. Come here, look at this. Come on in here, bring your subway sub, take a look through this telescope. Most folks don't own one, we're glad to share ours and let people get uh, you know, close-up views of the moon, Saturn, Jupiter, things like that. <clears throat> it's in our blood. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that you guys are considering revamping um, Cabarrus High School's planetarium. That would be, a, it's a gem. A gem in the making, it, it's gone downhill for a few years. It can be revitalized and uh, many students and many adults can uh, just cherish that for here on out. Thank you very much. What time will you be at Carolina Mall? About five to nine. About five to nine this Saturday. Weather permitting. Weather permitting. Be, yeah. Be nice crescent Clouds moon. tend to be troublesome when yeah. you're trying to do that. We're so. a fair, fair weather Thank hobby. You. Okay, great. So anybody that's interested, come out to Carolina Mall this Saturday a little after five. Well, we appreciate your support. Thank you. Um, next, I have William Arnold. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Arnold. Uh, I want to take just a few moments here. We have a problem. I've been a resident of Cabarrus County for 32 years. And I'm Colonel Metaxas. Uh, we don't get Channel 22 in our neighborhood, so we don't know what goes on. I'm quite unprepared for what I'm going to tell you. Uh, we are in Cabarrus Woods, which is the forgotten community, which is the very end of the county 
on the Mecklenburg side. It's been in battle for years about who actually owns it, Mecklenburg or Cabarrus, and we wound up being in Cabarrus. Uh, we have a major problem, and I, I need your assistance and your help on it. I've, we have tried for one year now to get something done about the speeding and cut through traffic on our street. It's a nice wide street. It's about 36 foot wide. It might be 40. I didn't measure it. It's one mile long. If you drive 30 miles an hour, it takes you two minutes to get from one end to the other if you don't run into kids or parked cars or other, other traffic conditions. Uh, if you're going 60, it only takes one minute. Okay? Unfortunately, I have some uh, tra traffic studies done by the Cabarrus County Sheriff, Sheriff Riley, and they provided me with these. I only have one copy of two of these for y'all, but uh, it shows in uh, no, October of last year, maximum speed was 60 mile an hour and the posted speed limit is 25. Right? In uh, July, maximum speed was 55 and the posted speed is 25. It's been that way the whole time. Uh, it is serious. Uh, the Sheriff's Department has done some patrols and they put the radar trailers up to give us this material to work with and I will leave that for y'all. Uh, we've talked to the, the Highway Patrol and they've had some campaigns out there I talked to the DA's office and I was told that they do not plea bargain the case if they've had a big conviction anywhere in the five counties surrounding. The minimum ticket price is $265. But we still have speeders. And I know it's a budget constraint and things, but we have a nice wide street. There are no markings on it. You're not allowed to park on the street because it is, quote, a deeded state road. I talked to the DOT. The DOT says, it's not a problem. We'll put speed humps on any road that you, if you pay for it, but we won't put them on state roads. The Highway Patrol, I believe, in the last year has written, that I know of, about 225 citations there. Most recently, one was one neighborhood resident for a seatbelt violation. Uh, the state legislature has asked me to ask you to ask for a formal traffic study so we can proceed further to try to get this resolved. We have... In this one state, we have 1,101 cars in a 4.7-day period. In this other one, we have 1,922 cars in an 8-day period. That's a lot of cars on that small road. Right? We, would like, you know, we would like some help. We don't have sidewalks. We don't have streetlights. And we have a problem. And as the medical community gets built on Rocky River Road, it's going to get worse. Uh, so, oh. Thank you. If you want to hand those to Mr. We Marshall. We also have a part of a petition that we have for, of homeowners in the area, in the same block area. So okay. please consider it. Great. Thank you very much. Um, Glenn Paul Sellers. Welcome, Mr. Sellers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. And i kind of give you a brief overview of what I'm going to say tonight. But some of the main, one of the main things I left out was what the town of Mount Pleasant is going to be handing you for the fire budget. And I'm going to start it off. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. My name is Glenn Sellers. I'm a resident in the Mount Pleasant Rural Fire District. I'm here regarding the tax increase of four cents per hundred. The proposed that you will be receiving from them that I've got is the current proposed without the tax increase is $478,177.84. They're wanting to increase the budget to $638,692.23. Uh, I myself volunteered for the fire department and the rescue for 21 and a half years in Mount Pleasant. Over this period of time, from 1981 till the year 2002, I never took any compensation. I was all, it was all volunteer. During that time, the fire tax was lower and we operated on less than $100,000 a year. Uh, since then, the only new growth in our town seems to be the Oldenburg subdivision and the new structure at the Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church. And it's a huge structure and it's nice. Everything else seems to remain the same in Mount Pleasant. I'm here to ask the county commissioner to really consider why the town of Mount Pleasant wants his rural residents to pay more fire tax. The town board would tell you they need this increase from the rural residents to even what the town residents pay in fire tax. They're saying the town residents pay close to 13 cents per hundred. 
What they're not telling you is that the 13 cents is based on repayment of a loan made to the fire department for a purchase of a new truck in 2007. To get to the 13 cents they say they are contributing to is with the repayment of $80,000 plus interest along with 100 or so thousand that the town puts in to its budget to make the total town residents the 13 cents that they're coming up with. But this will only be temporary. These loans will be uh, in payments will be paid in 2013 will be $80,000 plus interest. In 2014, 84,000 plus interest of $4,073. In 2014, the truck will be paid off and the, and the town will be put back at their old rate of what they're contributing. And that will be approximately $120,000 a year. But the rural fire district contributes $300,000, which will put them at the budgeted amount of $450,000. I have included a copy of the 2011 audit about the fire truck payments and when it will be paid off. We're being told that they need this fire increase from the rural district to help lower homeowners insurance costs. To verify if I could save money on my homeowner's policy, I contacted Corey Henson and Associates, my all-state representative. The insurance representative stated that on my policy were rated a six on the fire rating. They explained that even if they added staff or additional equipment to the uh, department, this would not guarantee a rate reduction. They couldn't guarantee that, even with a, with a lower rating. The residents in the rural fire district have no say in how our money is spent, other than the voting for the county commissioners here I stand before. A good example that we don't have no input is when the town received um, the water system from the county to Mount Pleasant, we pay more than the town residents do. And the town residents have older lines, our lines are new, but yet we pay more. So we don't have no voting power, no say so other than y'all. So I'm kind of leery and what I'm here to ask for also is that Maybe we need a board of directors in addition to the Mount Pleasant board because our portion makes up from one half to two thirds of the total fire budget. If Northeast Fire Department can operate with $87,000, then how come we can't operate with the 320,000 plus 120,000 that they put in for a total of 478,000? Why do we need this increase? We have a ladder truck, two pumper trucks, a rescue truck, and all of them are in great condition. I mean, really nice condition. Uh, in addition to this, we got 500,000 I'm hearing from FEMA in the last few years, another 230,000 from FEMA that the town has received for the fire budget in the last 10 or so years. So that's an additional 700 some thousand that has been given to the town of Mount Pleasant for our fire department. Uh, I'm all for a paid staff when the 911 call comes in. I myself agree that time is of the essence. I'm glad that we have a staff to respond to get it when someone needs a medical assistance or a fire call. I'm grateful we have people to, willing to respond and serve. But I also hear the call load from Mount Pleasant has gone down, not gone up. So I feel like we are not a town or a district like Harrisburg or Concord with lots of businesses or lots of home subdivisions that would require such a huge budget. I feel like until the town of Mount Pleasant until, and until the district grows in size, this tax increase is unwarranted. And we really haven't had no growth in Mount Pleasant lately. It really is just the same simple little town and I love it. And I'm a big supporter of Mount Pleasant, so don't get me wrong. So you can have a huge budget and all the things that you can get with the huge budget, but fire statistics would tell you, you're still gonna have a loss and losses, even with uh, a lot of money. So I thank you. Thank you. And as you know, we have not received their request yet. But we appreciate you coming. Thank you. Um, next, I have Carrie Gluff. Welcome. I promise, I promise I'm close to three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. You're used to talking fast. I already know that. All right. Thank you. My name is Kerry Gluff. Um, my family and I have lived and worked in Cabarrus County for over 22 years. Um, I'm a teacher at Hickory Ridge High School. 
I'm here to speak against the proposed resolution regarding the Second Amendment rights to our citizens and to speak on behalf of the silent majority of citizens who believe that reasonable gun control laws do not infringe on Second Amendment rights. The Second Amendment reads, a well-regulated militia being the best security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Quote, a well-regulated militia being the best security of a free state. Many defenders of unrestricted gun rights conveniently leave out that part of the amendment. The words well-regulated are right there in the amendment itself. My research has led me to a personal belief, and I repeat personal belief, that the Second Amendment was intended to serve two purposes, to protect the rights of the states in a newly formed union, and to allow individuals the right to bear arms for the purposes of hunting and self-preservation. However, I do not believe that it grants individuals the right to bear AK-47s or bazookas or grenade launchers or tactical nuclear missiles. You might laugh at that statement, but without those words, well regulated, that is where the Second Amendment leaves us. Our founding fathers were very smart. They did not put definitions in the amendment. They left that up to us. Believe it or not, I'm not here to debate the intentions of the Second Amendment. I don't believe this is proper forum. More specifically, I do not believe that this board needs to present a resolution regarding the discouragement of future arms regulations when the majority of its citizens do not agree with this position. I've attached supporting information for that. More importantly, I'm very concerned that this board would even consider a resolution that instructs our law enforcement of members to disregard any new regulations passed by our elected federal government. It is my understanding that this part of the resolution was or will be removed, but I am still very concerned that it was even there in the first place. Individual freedoms make our country one of the greatest in the world, but it is our hard work, civility, and respect for the law that has turned us into a trusted world leader. You are part of that leadership. What kind of example are you setting by saying we are only going to obey laws that we feel are right? It tears at the very fabric of our society, and I respectfully ask you to reconsider the entire resolution. With my 17 seconds, I do want to say that I appreciate all the work that you do, staff and commissioners. It's a tedious, thankless job, and I do want to thank you for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, those are all the yellow cards that I have. Um, next we have old business. Uh, Mr. Crabtree from Kannapolis City Schools is unable to be with us tonight, commissioners. Um, in your agenda, we do have the update that says Kannapolis Intermediate School roofing project was completed last week. After all the projects have been reconciled, Kannapolis City Schools will report on any leftover funding and make any recommendations on uh, those funds and how they would be used. So hopefully Mr. Crabtree can be with us next month. Uh, the next items that we have are our consent agenda. Please make a note that F3 budget amendment has been added. Um, we have discussed the Cardinal Innovation sublease termination and settlement agreement. Other than that, the other items are what we placed on the consent agenda at our work session. Um, so at this time, I would accept a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and I have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you all very much. And let me fast forward. <coughs> Next, we have our new business. Um, Next we have, let's see, um, a request for <coughs> approval to complete the survey of the Cabarrus-Stanley County line. Um, we need to hold a public hearing. Um, let's see, in brief summary, in 1994, 97, 99, and 2006, Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners requested that all the North Carolina geodetic survey aid us in establishing our boundaries with surrounding counties by resolution in accordance with General Statute 143A18. Greg Belk, Special Boundary Commissioner for Cabarrus County, reports that the North Carolina General Statute has completed, or I'm sorry, I'm used to saying that, N NCGS has completed its work on the Cabarrus-Stanley County line and is ready to begin surveying and setting monuments. 
All taxpayers impacted by the survey have been notified by letter and a public informational meeting was held at the Mount Pleasant Library on March the 7th, 2013. A resolution requesting the North Carolina State Legislature to alter the Cabarrus-Stanley line, County line is attached in our agenda. The resolution requests the Cabarrus-Stanley line to follow the center of the riverbed of Rocky River from the intersection of the county line with Rocky River southwest to the intersection of the Union County line. So at this time, we need to hold a public hearing. So I would ask, I will open the public hearing, and I will ask, is there anyone here to speak for or against um, the survey of the Cabarrus County, Stanley County line? Okay, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Um, commissioners, uh, we discussed this at our work session. So at this time, um, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? Okay, I need a motion, please, to approve the NCGS to begin surveying and placing monuments along the Cabarrus County, Cabarrus Stanley County line. So moved. Second. I have a motion, a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Next, I need a motion to approve a resolution to ask the North Carolina Legislature to alter the Cabarrus Stanley County line to follow the bed of Rocky River as described in the resolution. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And third, I need a motion to approve surveying fee proposal agreement with Stewart Inc. subject to revision and or review by the county attorney. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And Brent, is there anything else that we need to do, or does that cover? I think that covers it. That covers it. Okay. We made it easy on you. Good. <laughs> Thought you might like that. Um, next, we have a request from the town of Midland, and I would like to recognize David Pugh, and I'd like to recognize Mike Talent. We appreciate you being here. Is there any other city councilman here tonight? I thought you were the one that was here, so I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody, though. Um, the Town of Midland has requested the support of the Board of Commissioners for the Town's 2013 North Carolina Clean Water Management Trust Fund grant application. Um, we do have a letter in our packet um, from their town administrator that has details. Um, we put this on our um, new business agenda from the work session. Um, Commissioners, do you have any questions? Would you like to have a presentation from the town administrator? What is the effect that, that this may have on the county? Jonathan, if you want to help, you can. <laughs> you want me to go ahead? Thank, thank you, um, Commissioners. One um, note uh, very quickly, as it says uh, in the... Uh, second to last sentence of the first paragraph, see exhibit one below. Um, if you can just please disregard that because we're still working with the city of Concord as well as our engineers, McGill Associates, to um, the, it won't affect the 50 homes, but it's just the delivery method and attempting to not have a pump station. I'll, when you can do gravity fed, obviously, it's much, much better. But that There's one attached because we didn't have, there is nothing attached that we have in our packets. Yeah, it, exactly, and that's uh, there is nothing attached, and that should, like I said, just that line should be omitted anyway, um, just because, again, we're working on um, in the final phases before any kind of uh, final surveying construction, just working on a better delivery method that won't involve a pump, pump station. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, the benefit of this is, uh, as you know, the town of Midland, um, the past, uh, I guess, uh, Councilman Town, five, six years, has put uh, at the top of their agenda um, um, getting water and, or excuse me, getting sewer to um, the citizens of Midland, especially some of the underserved areas where we have some uh, documented black water problems that are that have failing sewer systems. When it rains, sludge comes up. It uh, affects the environment. It affects the health. And so this is phase one of the Cabarrus Acres area that is aiming at uh, mitigating some of those problems. And we, uh, and again, we're just looking for uh, support from the commission for our. Uh, uh, North Carolina Clean Water Management Trust Fund uh, request of $600,000. Does this only affect the incorporated part of Midland, or does it also affect, uh, obviously it's in Cabarrus County, but the unincorporated part of Midland? This is only in the town limits of Midland. Okay, because what I want to make certain is that if we do an approval of this, we're not going to have an issue um, 
I can't, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now, um, over in Kannapolis, where we did yeah, sewer. Yeah, looking at the Princeton Park, Fishertown area. Fishertown, yeah. that's it. Yeah. I want to make certain that, that we don't have that issue where there is no more monies out there that we can, that the county can assist Fishertown in the sewer. We have a Clean Water Trust Fund grant, of course, that Dennis Testament mentioned earlier, as well as Ned Hudson at Cox <clears throat> Mill. That's the only one we've applied for recently, and we're still wrapping that up. So we don't intend to apply for any anytime soon. But And I, we don't think we've ever identified that to help Princeton Park and Fishertown okay. and the other grant sources we'd seek. Um, there is some unincorporated area this would affect, some property that the county owns. And um, Midland has raised, the town of Midland has raised the issue that the sewer line could actually benefit us in the development of Wallace Park, so we'll be looking at that with them. Okay. That was my concern. I just want there is an issue of a community that has not been incorporated into uh, the city, and as a result, we're tapped out. We can't do anything else financially, um, and that's that's. I want to make certain. I want to make certain this we don't get into that situation here. Sure, understood. Any other questions, commissioners? Okay, thank you. If, thank you, Commission. At Appreciate this it. time, um, then I would accept a motion um, that we um, support um, the Town of Midlands North Carolina CWMTF grant application. So moved. I have a motion and I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, Ann Wilson is here. We have talked about our geo bonding refunding a couple times. So. Yes, we have. Welcome. Um, and, and fortunately, the market is is going in our favor. So, so if we can just hang on till next Thursday, hopefully um, we'll get a really good deal on our bond refunding. What we wanted to do is give you the opportunity, if you did so desire, to pay some down on the on the loan. Um, However, I understand from the comments last time that folks are thinking that maybe the next time we would need to borrow, the rates would be a little higher, and so it might be that we would just want to hold on to our cash. So I just wanted to know what, what if there's been any decision so that I can do your pleasure. Well, I, I've raised the issue about whether we pay it down or not. I think Commissioner Morris made a very good idea is that, or suggestion is that with the price of it right now being very, very low, that the benefit um, does not outweigh um, of doing that. So I don't think we should pay it down. I think we ought to just borrow what we have and get a lower interest rate and realize the benefit that way. If we did, I think we, the monies that we have saved, the savings that we have, we I need to identify and set aside to understand that that's going to be either for future um, pay-as-you-go projects or um, paying down debt if it gets to the point that we can pay down debt it's without a prepayment penalty or something like that. Okay. Well, Any other comments, Commissioner Morris? Well, I mean, I agree with um, Commissioner White. And you know, as we said before, with other needs that we have looming that we may have to go out and borrow funds in the next couple of years, we're going to have to probably pay a higher interest rate. So we will actually probably save or could potentially <laughs> save a significant amount of money by not doing a prepayment. So. That's fine. Thank you so much. Commissioner Meesmer, I want to give everybody a chance. Commissioner well, Meesmer. I, I would just say, and I don't have the numbers in front of me uh, mm -hmm. that we had last time. Um, from what I can recall, um, I know there was a range from, I guess, $1 million to to $5 million that we could pay. And Keep I going, know, excuse me, one one forty five. Two more pages oh, over. I okay. think you'll find it. Oh, there I'm sorry. Go. I did not see that. Okay. Um, somehow I missed that. I, you know. I understand uh, Commissioner Morris and Commissioner White's um, opinion about the the interest rates being uh, lower now than they will be in the future. Um, however, I would like to see, in my opinion, I would like to see some of our cash going towards paying down the debt um, and knowing that you know we really can't fund any projects in the near future anyway. So, um, you know, with that being said, you know I wouldn't want to. You know, finance anything you know in the near future, and I would like to, you know, contribute some of our cash to, um, to the debt. Mr. Burge. Well, I'd like to see us put the five million dollars down, save all we can. I don't think interest rates is going up with the economy like it is, and with the situation we got in Washington D.C. Uh, 
I wouldn't be too much concerned about interest rates going up, but I think we ought to save all the money we can for the taxpayers of Cabarrus County. Um, and I, I would say that, um, what interest rate do you think we're going to get? Somewhere in what range? It started at like 1.97, and then it's gone to like 2.03, and it, it, like you say, it varies daily. Yeah, so somewhere around 2%. Mm -hmm. And the term is um, a little over 13 years? Yeah, would they're be. staggered terms, but that's the, the longest. Right. Um, I would be in favor of um, not putting money down at this time because of the, such a low interest rate. Um, I do think that we will be faced with some projects in the future, and uh, we had a request tonight concerning the planetarium. Um, there are a number of smaller projects that we would not finance, um, and this would allow us to do some of those one-time projects um, if we don't put the money down, that we could look seriously at some of those other one-time projects and see if we want to allocate some more funds in that direction. Um, I don't know what those would be at this point in time. Um, I believe that uh, Cabarrus County Schools, though I haven't talked to anybody, you know, we've had a presentation from them of almost $200 million worth of projects. Um, they're going to come to us in the near future, if not during this budget cycle, for an elementary school, uh, possibly uh, middle school, and um, I'd like to use the monies that we have to um, pay on those projects because um, I do think that there's only a certain amount of time that we're going to keep interest rates this low. I mean, they're going to have to go up. A lot of people think that it's um, uh, free market needs to take over and uh, determine what the interest rates will be. I think it was sometime this week I was listening on the radio, and um, one guy said that he thought that the real interest rate that out there right now is somewhere between five and six percent, that um, based on what the Federal Reserve's doing, that this uh, two percent level is um, really discounted and um, not sustainable. So um, I do think we'll see an, an increase. I don't want to see an increase, but I don't know when it's going to be. Um, but I would go along with um, not putting money down at this time because of um, all the different projects out there. And I, I know Kannapolis City Schools will have projects. Um, there are a number of them out there. County has projects also that we'll be talking about in the next few months. So. Oh, yeah. I think as the budget proceeds, we're going to hear a lot about various needs, and there'll be a lot of decisions to make. There will be a lot of decisions to make. So based on that, we're not going to do a, a motion. I don't think we need to do a motion on that. It was just to get our input. Um, three of us would say not to put money down, and two would indicate to put money down. So, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, next, we have uh, Lynn Whitkey's here and Londa Strong is here to talk about Mount Pleasant Middle School Park bathrooms. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so Thank you. much. Good evening. Um, Mr. Whitkey has information that I believe you all received in reference to several different um, bathrooms for Mount Pleasant. So it's Instead of going on to issue, I'll let uh, him present. But also I want to let you know that uh, Billy Swearingen, who the president of Mount Pleasant, is also here to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Um, and I, first of all, I want to apologize for the quality of some of the photos that you probably received. I do have hard copies of, of the documents that I did send you. Uh, if you've had, had difficulties, uh, I, I brought it back up uh, myself after I had sent them over. To, uh, to Megan and realized that some of them looked pretty pretty down dark, and I apologize for that. Um, what I was trying to do was really just in a very short period of time uh, last week gather information from several different sources as to what would be available in the way of a facility that could be put in place in short order, but not necessarily be a permanent structure. And that's really what my, my research was showing. Uh, there are uh, a variety of vendors, uh, some very local, others uh, a bit more remote. Uh, but there are both basically mobile type, if I, I'll, I'll look, I'll suggest we think about like a mobile classroom, but they make bathroom facilities just like that, um, that can be in effect rolled into place and then put on the site. Uh, there are two manufacturers, uh, I think that was A and B that I showed you, uh, examples of their quotes and, uh, and what, what would come with those facilities and the sizes of them roughly. Then the um, C unit, 
I get my pieces straight. That's a privately owned uh, unit that, that is uh, actually constructed. It was built in 2003 and has been used periodically uh, in the area. And it has just been refurbished and is available uh, for purchase. And then items D and E, sorry, D, D2 and E uh, were examples um, of uh, what, what I call truly portable, where you literally, it's on wheels and remains on wheels. It's, it's hitched on to a, generally a pretty substantial pickup truck for the most part, um, and move from place to place. Uh, and obviously you can see from the different pricings that you tend to pay a bit of a premium to have that flexibility. And I think in the, in the short time that I looked at this information, um, and, and depending on what what the commission feels and the board feels like doing. Um, we, we did talk initially about the ability to pick it up and, and move it. All, literally all of the facilities I've given you uh, can do that. It's just a question of what exactly you want uh, to think about you know, purchasing. The um, usability or, or the length of life of these portables, uh, as you can see, unfortunately, we've become very adaptive, adept rather, at maintaining these facilities because some of ours in the school district are as old as 20 years. Uh, they do require an investment of money over time. We paint the roofs, we paint the walls, we replace windows and doors as they need to be replaced, that sort of thing. But in, in the substance of the unit is there and can remain there for quite a number of years. So um, I would say that the, it, although they're portable and they, people refer to them as that, they certainly, uh, uh, unfortunately, in, in case of school classrooms, sometimes stay a long time. Um, and so we've had a lot of experience with them. The, uh, the, the one thing that I like about those type, the, the, more, the more like mobile classroom types, is that if you had to make a change to them, it's fairly easy to do. As you get into the truly portable ones, especially the ones that have the molded units, that's not so easy to do. So if there's a change in the code or you have to add something to those, it becomes much more difficult to accomplish. But other than that, I'm certainly open to questions. I know Alanda and I have talked a lot about this in the last week and are happy to answer anything you have. Hey, commissioners, questions, please. So as, as I see it, you've given us three different choices. Mm -hmm. Well, four, the fourth one being Porta Johns. Well, yes. That, that, um, and, and all kidding aside, I mean, we, we did use those for a number of years out there. The problem is that um, I think because of the number uh, that were there and the amount of use that they get from time to time, they're, they're not practical. And, um, and I think uh, we found that to be the case at Rocky River Road, uh, I'm sorry, Rocky River Elementary School, where uh, when you have large groups for tournaments and things, it becomes very difficult to have a sufficient number of porta potties in place. And, um, but that's certainly, I'm not, I'm not saying that isn't an option, it's just, it's, it's not, in my opinion, the most desirable. Um, we, we feel that uh, any of the portable units that, that I've shown, and I mark them uh, A, B, and C, any of those options are certainly viable. And uh, I, I know the question did come up when we spoke last week about being able to pick the unit up. You can pick those units up, you just can't do it with a, with a vehicle that the county or the school district owns. It's a specialized vehicle that, that you have to hire to have that done. And, uh, but it just, again, it comes down to how often do you think you'll move it. Um, they, they, they can be moved fairly easily, uh, but like I say, it takes a special rig. It's a wide unit, it's wider than most uh, pickup trucks could handle. And so they have a, they have a large truck uh, that they pick these up with and something that uh, they do. And, and, and they're familiar with all the highway regulations in terms of how to move it and all. So I would say, say you're, if you're planning to move it regularly, that would be, that would be a, a difficulty to do on, on our own. Um, but at the same time, as we spoke initially, uh, we're looking at hopefully a middle school solution there on that particular site that will come about in the next few years. So I would think that this first purchase and use of the facility would keep it there for a number of years. You know, you wouldn't be moving it after each season, as an example. So. Have you been able to verify um, the hookups and 
the availability of sewer? Is it a holding tank that would have to be there for a while? I mean, yes, more, more than how likely. How does that, how yes. have you, what, what information do you have for that? We have water and power available. Uh, we, we have to run it from, from the source, but we have it on, on site and available. We have sewer at the street. I'm going to... I probably misspeak because I'm not that familiar with the roads. I believe it's called North Street. It's a, it's a street just, just north of, of uh, the, the school. Uh, in that street is a forced sewer main. We've had a tap made into that lane, uh, sewer line, so it's available to us. The difficulty is, is that when you tie into one of those, you have to have a lift station, unlike... Uh, we were hearing from Midland, uh, you, you, there, if you can get gravity, that's ideal. We don't have gravity nearby, so we, our, our real option here is a force main. And you have to, in effect, take the gravity feed from the unit and then pump it into the force main because it's at pressure. And you, and you need that, that lift station, if you will, which forces the sewage into the line at the same, same pressure. So, so we need a lift station, and that's costly. Um, in the range of ten to twelve thousand dollars. So, out of the options that we have, A, B, C, D, E, the recommendation would be to pick one of the options, A, B, or C. Yes. D, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay, and I mean, A, you've got a tall cost of. Fifty-three thousand nine hundred, but that does not include the the force main and Correct. putting in the sewer. So N none of these do include the. Uh, so utilities. how much in addition are we looking to have to add? I mean, what's the total dollars that? What do you have to put in as the school system, and how much money are you, is the county having to look at funding? Honestly, um, originally we were told a much different price for the for the. Um, uh, well, the pump lift station and so um, I was I was willing to commit my my staff and their their skills to get these lines put in we will do the water and sewer <coughs> lines uh, I'm sorry water and electrical lines and we can make the hookup of the sewer line but I'm I did not anticipate the cost of that um, pump station being that expensive so I'm, I'm saying and uh, we haven't bid it we've just taken some prices so I'm saying that the pump station is around twelve thousand Water and electrical should not be that expensive, and we should be able to do that under school efforts. Does that twelve thousand include installation? That would be with us doing it. They'll they'll, they'll provide oh, the, the equipment, but they're we'll, gonna they're gonna set the equipment. Yes, sir. And y'all gonna hook it to the sewer line. Yes, sir. What's the age of all these units? The first two A and B are, are new, and the brand new, never yeah. been used. Correct. These would actually be built to our specifications. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, C is uh, 2003. <clears throat> B does not have any delivery and setup fee. Correct. Listed. Was one one did and one didn't. And, uh, so, and that's forty four thousand nine hundred dollars. So, you, are they? Is that in the price of the unit? Yeah. Yes, it is. Correct. The one, I'm looking at, uh, where'd it go? And then C the, is one that's previously owned? Yes. The, the thing I wanted to draw your attention to, if I could, Madam Chair, was that there's one and I'm, that cannot deliver for several weeks. That was, that was the, I'm missing the information, right? That was B, B I believe. Was okay. It says six weeks. So <coughs> yes. Yeah, although it, yeah, the delivery and everything was included, it was a long, long time to get it. So B, season will be over with before it can even get here. Yes, ma'am. So the 12000 is an additional cost on top of the total cost of the unit, just so we're clear. That is okay. correct, yes. Well, you know, C is obviously the cheapest option. It's not the most attractive. But it says uh, it can be delivered in three days and set up within three days? Yes, sir. I was confused looking at the diagram. At, um, I guess the ladies' room has two stalls, the men's room has one, and what is the side room this, it looks like with the sink? This was actually used as a... Um, it, was, it was used by Mecklen... Mecklen um, 
County, Mecklenburg County Sheriff's Department as a, um, it was a guard station in effect, as he explained it to me. And I think they used the, the bathrooms as public bathrooms, but that front area was actually a guard's, an officer's post. So it was an office. And we would probably um, develop a, another bathroom in that particular part of the unit. We'd add another uh, ADA compliant bathroom stall okay. and uh, make it more of a family type uh, unit. Would C be able to handle the capacity of the number of individuals using that facility? It's, uh, it's, as it stands, it would be two more fixtures than they currently have, and then we'll be adding uh, at least another two fixtures as well okay. in, the, in the office space. So. I've got a couple questions for Mr. Swearinger. Yes. Um, I know throughout uh, several of these proposals, or I mean all the proposals, it's um, a question of <clears throat> who's going to maintain, you know, the cleanliness and the the paper products and you know what goes into maintaining um, a restroom. And I was curious if your association's willing to. Um, to take on that role or how that's going to play out with it, I'm, my opinion is that would be our responsibility yes sir okay i just wanted to make sure that was clear that it would be a responsibility um and you know i know there's been an issue oh, this is issues been raised because the bathrooms have been locked um out at the gymnasium um and i just found out that the the doors i guess the locks have been changed were you aware of that that they had been changed? Yeah. Not until <clears throat> the day that, that Mike Colbert went to unlock them and found out his key wouldn't work and then subsequent contact with the school. The school felt that someone had been going in there at night, uh, maybe some vagrants or whatever, and sleeping, and, and they had some issues with it. I think they didn't know that we actually were unlocking the door and then locking it back at night, so they changed the locks. We do now have new keys for the locks, and we right. used them this past weekend. Okay, so have you been locking and unlocking the doors since the beginning of this um, I guess practice season and more than once because we were locking, we were unlocking them. The school was coming in behind us and locking them back. And we had to get somebody with the key to go back and unlock them again. And the only way to unlock them was to prop the door open some way. And I think it must be every time the janitor came by, uh, he was locking it back. We didn't know who was locking it back. All we knew was we kept having to unlock it. Uh, and that happened on more than one occasion. And of course, sometimes the person with the key went by to unlock it, and he was off to watch his kid play boss, baseball at the high school, and we didn't have access to the key until he returned from the game. Okay, so is there just one person with access to the key? That, that's the only key we have. Was okay. Point. Yeah. And is that, I guess that's someone within your association that's designated? Correct. With the key. Okay. How much is your um, organization going to be supporting, financially supporting whatever plan we, if we approve any of the plans? As our situation currently, we would have to have a fundraiser. And we don't traditionally have fundraisers. We make uh, what money we make to pay the umpires and support the league through the concession sales. Uh, when we get through at the end of the year, let's say we have last year we had a couple thousand dollars left. Uh, so I go out and I buy new nets for the batting cages that uh, put up downtown. Mount Pleasant, we pretty much support ourselves completely. We get do, do get some help from the county. We get bases, we get marking dust, we get pitching rubbers, home plates. Everything else is entirely funded by our organization, including all the equipment it takes to work a field. Uh, and, and it's more than one field. There's four fields there. There's three there and one down at McAllister. So currently it's for us to offer any kind of financial uh, assistance to the county, we would have to undertake some type of fundraising. Have you thought about doing that? Have we? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Is that is y'all's funding any different than any other of the organizations? So we're all, Mrs. Strong, we're all, all the organizations do the same thing that Mount Pleasant's doing? That is correct. Uh, we provide the same thing for every association. Okay. And the other associations have you participated in the match, matching grants with the county, right? Most of them have from time to time, yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, usually we have, you yeah, brought around 500 kids, then you, a couple of parents, a couple of grandparents. So if you came by the fields on Saturday, you would have thought, you know, 
that some kind of fair circus was going on. It was our opening day. Our traditional kickoff is called Super Saturday. They have it throughout the county. Uh, Mount Pleasant, to be a rural community, uh, certainly does support its youth athletics, and there's certainly a great deal of kids that participate in it. And uh, happy to say that, you know, if I had four kids to go through it, I know Mr. Downs has had kids go through it. Uh, and, and we developed some some talent out of that, uh, but yeah, you know, I get my pleasure from being on the ball field. That's where I'd be tonight. Tonight's the first opening night I missed in 25 years. Uh, I'd be on the field with the kids tonight, uh, just giving them as much heck as I could give them. I just that's where I get my pleasure from being with those kids. Um, Londa, do do the different youth organizations such as Mount Pleasant and all the other ones, do they provide you with the budget every year or do they show you any any operating expenses that they have and things like that so we can get a better idea of the, the cost of running these different leagues? And We do not ask for that. In the co-sponsorship agreement that we have, we have some recommendations in there for them, but we do not mandate that from anyone. Could you provide that to us for Mount Pleasant? Do we? Could you? Could we? Yes, we could. Uh, and, and just to, to further expand on what I said, our, we usually set our rate for the entry fee based on the previous year. If we are lucky enough to have some money left over, we go buy some additional equipment. We replace our batting cages or, or we do something with the funds. Usually when we start up every year, we have $500. We start up and then at the end of the year, we hope that we still have $500. I understand that part. I've done that plenty of times with some other groups, but I mean that might that would help us just to if you give it to Londa and she can get it to us. Sure. Um, hey, you, Mr. Whitkey, you mentioned adding two more restrooms in that one area. Do you have some kind of a cost or school system going to pay for that? Or yes, yes, we will. Our pe our people looked at it, and you know we feel we can at least add uh, two more stalls either a stall and a urinal or two, two, two stalls and uh, make it uh, sort of a, we were thinking of as a family use facility with a changing table, that sort of thing. And we would do that remodeling. Okay, well, you said the changing table before I got a chance to. Oh, That's, yes. That area, I was wondering if you were gonna put a changing table that would fold down. It seems like that would be logical in that particular unit. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner Burris, do you have some preferences or any thoughts on the matter? Well, it looks to me like C would sort of be a waste of money for what you're going to get. Uh, and for what, what, you, what the need is, uh, uh, you know, with what you got there, you'll just, if you're going to do that, you'll just put a couple more porter johns up and forget about it. So that's your recommendation would be to go? I'd say B. B won't get here till after the season's over with. I don't care how long it takes to get here. If you're gonna buy one, you ought to buy a good one. Okay. So, would you want to do Porter Johns this season so that we have more time to look into it? Is that what you're? I'm trying to figure out. Well, I mean, I don't see how you really. Well, it depends on which one you want to buy. I mean, you're spending what was it, twenty? The gymnasium well, is open now. Right. But they have to cross the road to get to it. Porter John. We do. And then they have one portage on on site, but there's no water no there. Water. So across the street, there is water. Okay, so I mean, B is 44.9 plus you'd have to have 12,000 in for the pump. So you're looking at $57,000 for B. Well, you got to do the same thing on C, aren't you? C is 40,000. No, 27. 27.3. 27, add 12,000 for the pump. So. Yeah, C is 40,000, B is 57,000. And C, the school system's gonna add two more, two more of some kind um, in that other room to get the six in there, which is the same, you have six in, in B. I'm just trying to make sure where everybody wanted, wants to go with I mean, it. It just looked to me like that, that C's uh, uh, not gonna be sufficient for the, uh, what they want. I mean, I guess it'll work. He won't stand in line out there for an hour at a time. Now they're going to the trees. Well, they might <laughs> stand in line going to the trees. Hey, I guess the one question to I don't, Mr. Whiskey, have, have you talked with the town of Mount Pleasant as far as zoning? Will it meet their zoning regulations as far as appearance? Is that is that vinyl siding on there or is that? 
No, it's it's a um, a paintable surface. A paintable, yeah. like wood. Right. Or, it's or a. Parts, yeah. I just lost the name of it, but. Uh, that, thank you. Yeah, that's. I guess um, the question would be: Would that meet the zoning regulations? I'm not quite sure. But I don't know. We would need to do that. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Commissioner Morris, do you have some thoughts on the issue? Yeah, obviously, Mr. Whitkey knows a lot more about these structures than I do. Uh, you know, the, the the issues that I would be concerned about um, is the, uh, you know, are are we treating all the associations, different ones, similarly and fairly? Um, the the concerns that I've heard from from folks in Mount Pleasant have. Um, hinged more on the safety issue of children crossing the street to get to the gym and then i understand the tr problems you've had gaining regular access to the gym um you know if if you tell me that that number three is the quickest and least expensive and it'll serve the purposes then i feel comfortable with that um you know i would hate to see us have to wait on something that's after the season because it's obvious that the need is immediate. You know, with the Porta Johns, I've had some folks express accessibility issues for grandparents and, and maybe folks that have some issues. Um, so that that's not a good solution either. So you know, I would I would lean towards num towards C if you think that's adequate. We do. We we believe. Um in, in adding the additional unit, the additional bathroom, that it, it gives the folks as much as they have right now, and then you know with the addition of, of additional fixture, a little bit more than that. Um, if if uh, the issue of I think a lot of the folks are they don't like the small kids running across the street, and I, I would fully support that. It's right. a dangerous thing, and. Um, and so right now, they don't have much of a choice, uh, especially if there's a lot of folks out there. Uh, we think we can get this unit in there. We can get it operational fairly quickly. And um, we may, you know, depending on how, how fast we can get it, get it all done, we may have to use a temporary holding tank just until we can get the connections made to the, to the sewer line. Uh, we did talk to the town about that. Obviously, we made the tap with their, with their support. So. Um, I think that there's been a good communication with our office. I just can't exact, exactly answer the, the zoning question, Mike. But um, we, we believe that, that this unit would, would certainly address the, the immediate needs. Right. And we are looking at this as a temporary situation. Yes, sir. Yeah. That is correct. How, how long would it take um, your staff to install the new, um, the new um, facility in, in the room that was used as a headquarters you said or what? yeah it, it really would just take a matter maybe a week okay uh, so could the could they still use the other portion yes uh, the only time there, there'd be a downtime of a couple hours where we'd make a tie-in okay yeah so well you know option I, I would disagree with what option B just considering the delivery time and the time involved with that um, but a or C is fine with me um, one other question that I forgot to ask. On the driveway, um, have you had an opportunity to talk to Mount Pleasant about closing it off or at least during the afternoon or during ball games, especially on Saturday? Can you get up some barricades so that you could block off the area? So that Because this, this will be helpful, but they're still going to need to get to the gym because if you have 500 people out there, you know, one Porta John and these four to start with, then six really isn't a whole lot. I mean, it's better. Um, they're still going to need to get to the to the gym. Can you talk to them about either one the possibility of closing off the road, and two, is there any way that you can get permits from them to during those days to be able to close off the road, put up you know some kind of a barrier so that if you're going to and from, they would walk between that area so they're not just running around where the cars are coming in, if, if we pursued that at all? I'm, I, I haven't had the experience of talking with anyone, but. We talked with uh, DOT several years ago asking that very question when we first started developing the fields on that side with the school. Uh, this was before Mr. Whitkey and DOT 
indicated that it would have to be a request from the school. Everyone living on that section of North Drive would have to agree to abandon the street, and it's not an easy process. And as far as I know, the school never pursued it, and I know you know nothing about that. But And as far as the uh, having barricade for a specific area, there's really only one entrance or exit by the, in between, by the old tennis courts. Everything else is fenced off. Billy, does it go all the way to the left side if I'm facing the mm -hmm. ball fields? It's fenced all the way down, so we only have that one gate area. So it's not like kids could just run out anywhere. Well, but the problem is that they are crossing the road. There's cars coming down the road. There's cars coming into parking. Yes. So is there any way that, especially on a Saturday when you have a bunch of ball games, that you could do something temporary to make that safer to be able to go back and forth? And I suggested Billy get a yellow vest and a flag. <laughs> Well, well I, I spent 30 years doing that, so I okay. think I can I can handle it. But the only thing I would have a temporary is maybe there a stop sign on each side, or the yield to pedestrians, which is a state law, but there would have to be a crosswalk walk put there. Um, and the one thing I did want to add, even though I'm speaking on behalf of Mount Pleasant Youth Athletic Association, baseball and softball, uh, soccer and football also use those facilities. Now they do not have games there, but they do participate in practices during their seasons at the same field, the same facility. Um, thank you. And the other thing is that I would encourage Mr. Whitkey that the school board look at doing something to proceed because the plan that was developed for that property is to put build a new school on those fields. And at that point in time, you're gonna have to close the road anyway. So, I mean, I, I think that's a process that would be beneficial um, for the school board to look at and to proceed at least getting information on it because um, I can't imagine that we're going to go too much longer without finally replacing that middle school. And you could go ahead and get work done now in anticipation of that and for the betterment of the kids that are out there um, currently. So that's a concern. That's that's been going on for quite a long time. Um, so that that's I, I really have an issue with the the road and um, the crossing the the back and forth crossing and making that's still going to happen. So that needs to be more secure. Um, Commissioner White, do you have a preference of? No, I mean I look at the if we're going to do something, I agree with Commissioner Burge about B because it needs to be done. It needs to be plan for the future the problem is B takes too long and um, we face that to a much greater extent at the Rocky River um, parks so I think time is of the essence and we got to stop twiddling our thumbs and make a decision and I would say C is the, is the most is the best practical one monies I don't appreciate I don't like um, I don't I wish that that there would have been a joint venture um, frankly between Mount Pleasant but you know, you came to us with a need, and we need to address that need. Uh, and I look at this issue no different than um, transportation, um, when we have the rope, when we have uh, the H, C, G, B, D, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, there are people in the community that need help, and through no fault of their own, um, need us to step in and, and come up with solutions so that whether it's getting to work, whether it's putting in an HVAC unit, whether it's doing a ramp, um, a bathroom. Uh, we need to step up and do what we can for our citizens and then at the same time encourage that going forward we've got grant programs, we've got other programs to, to help out with these facilities um, because that is what we should be doing. Um, so that I would be proposing, uh, I would recommend C, I would be voting for C, and I would ask, I think all the commissioners need to look at voting for C. Okay. Any other comments? Can if I not, can yes. I just ask a question. Um, I, some, I, we're doing this certainly in support of, of um, Londa's office, and um, I'm concerned, however, about the bidding process and working with a particular vendor at this time. And I would only ask, is there a mechanism by which the board can choose to select this particular vendor to deal with, excluding others? Otherwise, I'm going to be in a, back manager, into a bidding process. That's, that's, a, that's attorney? a very good question. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, Rich, you might want to ask, answer that. I know we, we've got some 
guidelines we have to follow, but what? I hadn't looked into it, and I didn't bring anything on it, but I, I thought that the... May I make a suggestion? Yes, sir. I would suggest that if we're going to go out to bid, we go out to a privately owned 12 by 30 foot built bathroom unit to purchase. Um, and that's how we do it if we have to go out to bid. Yeah. We, we, can, we can meet with Sherry Barnhart first thing in the morning and make that, make that happen. So. Wouldn't this be an informal? Yes. yes. The, the cost yes, of it, we can do that. Which with what you have mm -hmm. should be sufficient. Yeah. yeah we've got... We've got Three, we've got more than three prices. They're not all the same exact units, so we'll just have to get some clarification on right. that. So that's fine. Hey. One, one last question: If you once this unit's installed, will you continue to use the gymnasium, or will you? You said this had a greater capacity than the gym. I think that's what I understood you to say. So yeah. you'll be using one or both of them. I would say we would just be using this mobile facility. So Through we the could. Years we've gotten by with, with three porta johns, two yeah. normal ones, and one that was ADA compliant, and never really had a, a big problem with lines or people being able to you know, to use it. Uh, it's like during the games, you know, people are back and forth, and then after the games, uh, and it seems like all the little kids have nerves right before the games right. get started. So you could totally eliminate the problem with the street I, I, temporarily, I somewhat. I think so. I yeah, mean, that's that's my opinion. Okay. Um, last question, because I keep forgetting to ask it. The pump station, yes, um, once another school, a school is built there, what happens to, and that unit has moved away, what happens to the pump station? We'll reuse the equipment. Uh, we have numerous pump stations, and, and the pumps go often, so we'll, we'll reuse that unit somewhere else. Okay. Yes, All right, commissioners, at this time, I mean, I think we've talked about it in pretty good detail at the work session and tonight. Um, is there a motion that anyone would like to put forward? Do we need to do a motion right now or do just a recommendation of C so that? We need to see what the bids come in at. You gonna bid it? What would you say that the action that we're going to give? I mean, at some point we have to have a motion to approve yeah. to go forward. We're not going to meet again for a couple weeks. The, I guess what I was envisioning out of this was that Basically, you were just going to fund it to the schools, and they were dealing with the bidding process and everything else. That's what I thought I understood the case to be. But well, then, but Ms. Dubois, can you? Yeah, yeah. Well, we got it. We got it. I don't know. We have to come up with it, where the money's coming from and the amount that we're going to fund. Right. I hadn't gotten there yet, but I was getting there. Okay. Now we can we can help them with the you know dealing with the bidding process. I think it can be done informally. Yeah. I just haven't I just haven't looked into it. I I just thought that that the you know, the consideration for this board was simply to fund it, but the, yeah. but the schools were, were going to. So do we. Yeah, if, if it's the county and we we're just providing the funding to the schools, then it would be the school's purchasing policies. If it's the county, if we're going to purchase a unit and, and, and have it set up here, and then the schools are just going to connect the utilities to it, then it would be under our purchasing policies. And we, if you came up with a, a not to exceed number, then we can go through the process of bidding it, whether it's a formal bid, it won't have to be a formal bid, but an informal bid, and we'll get clarification from the purchasing agent. Can we use these bids here, although they're not identical units? If not, we can send it out, and then I think it's seven days that we'll, we would have to send it out and get, get the bids back. Okay, so my question would be, um, <clears throat> I don't know if this is for Ms. Strong or who it's for, is it more advantageous advantageous for the county to own the unit or for the school system to own the unit because that seems to me who's going to be doing the purchase I think it's the county that needs to own it because we no offense to this the schools but we got Franklin's Park we potentially got North Cabarrus Park we've got if when it is no longer needed at Mount Pleasant there is another facility or another property that we have that will need to use it so I think it needs to go through the the, or needs to stay with the county right I'll, I'll agree with Commissioner White that I believe that we should handle the purchasing and school systems handle the connection and you know I think I think that we should move forward with a uh, motion to with the not exceed amount and allow the staff to you know continue their process tomorrow morning okay now but, just it's clarification hang on a second I'll come right back to you it's clarification they're going to put in the. You're going to put in the pump station, right? The county going to pay for it. 
if the county will pay for That's it. That's what I mean. The county. So we've got one, the cost of the, you know, the unit, I think a motion would have to be total cost of the unit not to exceed $30,000, something like that. And then um, provide funding, it would be two parts, provide funding to Cabarrus County Schools for $12,000 for a pump station and the money would come out of the county commissioner's contingency fund is where I, I think the money should come from. Any other comments, questions? Yes, sir, is, Mr. Burridge. Is that a good price on that pump station? Or is that a guess? No, we, we actually had a price of 12.3 just given to us. We, we did not bid that. We would bid the parts and, and hopefully come in you know, well below that number. Okay. Okay, so as I hear, um, I would agree that C would be the most um, expeditious one and also the most cost-effective one. Um, so we could make a motion to um, not to exceed $30,000 for a privately owned 12 by 30, 12 foot by 30 foot bathroom unit using these specifications. Um, and to, um, in conjunction to fund to Cabarrus County Schools, not to exceed $12,000 for the pump station to um, connect the unit um, and that it would come out of the county commissioner's um, contingency funds. Now, who's going to okay. keep up maintenance on this building? They will as long as it's on their property. If we take it and put it on a... The school board will take care of all the maintenance on it. Yes, we, well, we routinely do it through our agreement with, with the county and, and parks department. Yeah, if the we took it and put it at a park, though, we would then assume all maintenance because yeah, obviously it that. wouldn't be theirs. So. Yeah, the count, in, in, in the parks and rec budget for school parks, there is $50,000 in there to, to help uh, maintain those parks. Uh, and the school, the school system's maintenance department performs that maintenance, but however, they, they invoice us for their, the time and equipment. <clears throat> I would place that in the form of a motion. Second. Okay. I think I got everything. Does that make everything good for you? Everything good for you? Okay. I have to make sure our um, financial people agree with the motion. So there's a motion and there's a second. Any other discussion? Well, no, not really. I, it's, it's needed, so I can see the need for it. I just think it's too small, but, you know, we come back next year and buy a bigger one. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. You. No, and if I, you can just get those to her, she can get it through everybody. I just wanted to say thank you. I, I appreciate your concerns for the community, for the safety of the children, and your generosity. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. Let me get to the right place in my agenda. Next up, we have the Resolution regarding oops, Senate Bill 81. 81. Sorry, I'm trying to get to it. We have quite a few pages, and of course, I would touch on the wrong thing. Okay. Resolution regarding Senate Bill 81 and the creation of a Charlotte Regional Airport Authority. Um, commissioners, we talked about this at our last meeting. Um, we've got a couple resolutions. A number of counties have approved the resolutions. Uh, we saw those at our work session. Um, Commissioner Morris submitted a um, resolution um, for consideration. We were all asked to um, let the, count, the uh, clerk to the board know of any comments or thoughts that we had on the resolution. Um, since then, I received the redlined version um, that showed some changes but not I don't think every change, this is actually the House Bill 104, not the Senate Bill. Um, so there's still, as legislation goes, it's still in flux to some degree. So I would open up for discussion um, from anyone that would like to comment um, on this potential legislation. As, as I had mentioned before and uh, <clears throat> mentioned in this proposed resolution, I personally think that we should take no position on this. Um, it has become even more obvious as time has passed since the work session. Um, of the, uh, it seems to be a local Charlotte 
issue, and, and, and there's a tug of war between them and the state. Obviously, I don't know all the details of that, but I am sensitive to the fact that when the General Assembly decides to take this kind of action without consultation with the governmental entity that's involved, whether it be a county or a municipality, uh, you know, I think that we could be the recipient of the next action. Uh, and, and I have concern about setting that kind of precedent in support of that. Um, I still think that um, that our local Concord Airport would be best served to not be involved in that authority. Uh, I have concerns about the, the wording of uh, uh, Senate Bill 81. Um, the revisions that I have seen still include the sections that I am most concerned about. Uh, so I, I can see no benefit in us taking a position either either way. Um, you know, I still emphasize that in the event that, that it goes this direction and the authority is established, I think it is very important that we be uh, involved in and supportive of that. Uh, but I think that's a position that we might state once the decision has been made. Commissioner Meesmer, any comments? No? Well, <clears throat> you know, as I said in the work session, you know, I understand both, um, both sides, uh, both sides of the argument. Uh, one thing that I do not like is that, you know, if we were told that we did not support this, that we would not get a seat at the table. Um, and that that bothers me. That aggravates me. Um, there's no reason that we should, you know, be told that if this does happen, we should be involved. We should have a seat at the table, um, regardless if we support it or not at the beginning. Um, so that that really disturbs me. Commissioner Burge. Well, one thing concerns me about the whole thing is the debt that the uh, airport has now. Last I. They, they got $800 million worth of bonds outstanding. Uh, if the county gets involved in the airport authority and things get bad enough, you know, they come back to every county and want the counties to pick up the tab for this thing. I, my question is how much is it going to, you know, what, what's it going to cost us in the long run and is it really worth it? And the other thing is if you're going to have a seat on the board and, and, and uh, Every county that has an airport, a little local airport, if they're going to have a seat on the board, all them airports ought to be together in the airport authority, I think. But I think it's a bad idea to even get involved in it, really. Commissioner White. I, I think we ought to be discussing it because it is something that affects every one of us. Um, it's a economic engine for this area. And if we don't discuss it, if we don't vet it ourselves, then we don't get the opportunity. I don't think we get the opportunity to speak down the road. And the, in regards to setting precedent, um, you know, I don't think this is setting precedent. I think precedent has already been set. In doing my research in regards to the Charlotte airport, the city of Charlotte did not build that airport. That airport was built by the federal government, uh, by WPA or CCC workers. From the development of that airport through today, I cannot find and I do not see where the city of Charlotte has put one dime into that airport. Uh, the airport has paid for itself and the bonds and the debts that it has incurred is being um, paid for by the airport not by the city of Charlotte and when you look at something like that then I started thinking well what is very similar to that what is an asset that has that is an asset that is not identifiable to a government body but is collectively a, um, beneficial to a region and that got me to thinking about the IBT and the city of Concord and city of Kannapolis very quickly believed, and I do too, is that the water resources, the Catawba and the PD and the Yadkin, were resources of a region that need to be used by the region and needed to be um, discussed not only at the regional level but also on a state level. 
so that I don't believe this is precedent. I think the precedent was set when the city of Concord and the city of Kannapolis said that a resource such as water is something that is a resource that should be used within the region or within that entire region. And with the city of Charlotte not financing, not paying for, and not building the Charlotte Douglas International Airport, what is the difference between that asset and water as being an asset? So I look at it that way. And in regards to the statement about having a seat at the table, I agree. I, I don't like to be told what to do, but I look at it more on spurring discussion. What is it that this region wants to do? What is this region trying to do? And if you don't discuss it on a county level, then what in the world are we going to do? Are we going to just, just not ig ignore it? And I think that's tough. What could that authority, what could that airport do for Cabarrus County, for Lincoln County, for all the different counties that are around that it's being stymied right now because it's being focused only to be an asset for the city of Charlotte? And it's not an asset for the city of Charlotte. It wasn't built just for the city of Charlotte. It was built for this region by the federal government so many years ago. So I do think we need to discuss it. I do think it needs to be an airport authority. Uh, and I do think that we need to have a voice on that board. Um, I do have a, um, a, my opinion in regards to the person or persons that are appointed from Cabarrus County should be an elected official because if it's going to be an authority, there needs to be accountability back to the taxpayers and back to the voters. And if it is somebody that is not coming back to the voters, then how are the voters going to have a say as to what that person's doing or what that appointment is? So I do think it needs to be an elected official um, that serves on that, board, on that authority, and I do think we need to support the airport authority. Those are my concerns. How about the local airports in the area? The local airports, um, I'm still, I have, I have not found the pros or the cons. I think there, I, I mean, I know there are pros and cons, but I'm still not satisfied that the right answer is for the Concord to be in it. Um, do we, can we get an airport um, radio control? I am losing. Uh, my train of thought in regards to the radar, uh, air traffic controller. If that is part of the airport authority, that question I have not gotten answered. So that that's, um, I'm, I'm hesitant right now. I know that the city of Concord has put money into the airport themselves. So that is a difference. I see that as a difference than the Charlotte airport. Um, so. But overall, I do think the airport authority is something that can be beneficial to the entire region, uh, more so than what it is right now. Hey, um, well, I have a couple concerns in that um, the, the, which I know this happens with legislation, it's still a moving target. And one of the things in the red line version of the House bill that, that, um, that I had emailed to me it specifically states that it cannot be an elected official serving from Cabarrus County. And so I emailed back to the gentleman that sent it to me and explained to him why I thought it should be. Same reason you gave, and I've gotten no response at all. So, the, and, and I don't know why this person started emailing versus the first person that started emailing, but it seems like I read in the media that the first person that was sending us stuff, um, Charlotte City Council is trying to get off of um, the current I don't know if it's an advisory board or what it is. I'm not real certain what the what board he's on now. Um, I had hoped to be able to contact somebody um, over in Charlotte and try to get some more information from them. Um, I have not been able to speak to our representatives to see if they have any more information. Um, I agree with you. I think that the airport is a um, is a regional asset. I, your IBT argument's a pretty good argument. I will, I'll give you that one. Um, not thought about IBT. Actually, what I was thinking of is um, what assets do we currently have in Cabarrus County that I would be worried about losing? You know, Asheville, um, I believe it's Asheville with their water system. There's 
legislation to take it away for with no compensation. And I'm presuming that they've put some money into the water system. Um, uh, we have Wasat that's doing really well. I would hate to see some regional authority come in and say that um, you know that these whatever six, seven, eight, ten counties are all lumped in together now on on um, sewage and and what's going to happen you know with that to take away um, our controls. I guess at this point in time, I had, I still have a lot of questions. Um, so I'm at, I'm not at a comfort level at this right now to really know how to vote, to vote in favor of it or to, to not vote for it. And, and that's kind of where I'm coming from. I'm, I'm just not, I think there's more information out there. And right now the only people that I've gotten any information from are the ones that want it to happen. Um, I haven't gotten any information from anybody saying um, that they're against it. I don't know. I'm sure Charlotte City Council is talking about it. The mayor's probably talking about it. Um, my worry about um, it not being elected officials, making it another DOT where everything happens and you never know what's going to happen. I mean, we had a concern today about a DOT road, and you know, thank goodness we're not on the road business, but um, you don't always get a response. And I, I sit on the MPO board, and, and um, you know, they're really nice and friendly there, but I, it's hard to get a good answer. And whenever we've tried from our position to find out, we don't have a representative from Cabarrus County. There finally is one from... Rowan County that sits on it that's supposed to help cover our area, but you know we don't have a Cabarrus County person on DOT, so I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not at a comfort level to um, go forward with a resolution. So um, I'd like to get some more information. I don't know if we can get information between now and our next work session. Um, I don't know if there's anybody we could get to. You and I had mentioned previously when, because I, I requested we put it on the work session agenda this month. Um, is there anybody we could get to come in to talk to us about it? And and we kind of struggled on yeah, who we could even get to come in. So do you have any comments? Uh, I can continue to search for that person or persons uh, to come in. And I made a suggestion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Invite Senator Ruscio and uh, Mayor Fox. Yeah, that would be a good part. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I think one of them would be against it, one of them would be for it. Well, that's the that's, <laughs> that's the beauty that. of what we what we take and what we take away from it is to help us. If we don't have a position, that's the absolute beauty is the the yin and the yang on a topic to then help us understand it. Because then we'll have questions to further any one of our points of views to get a better understanding of it. Hey, so at this time, is there a desire to have a resolution? Is there a desire to Try to invite the, the yeah. two gentlemen to come and see if they'll talk to us. Or you know what? Uh, what, what would we need to do? I don't think we ought to make it. I don't think there's any consensus on the board tonight, so I don't think we should make a decision tonight. Um, if we do, it'll be a knee-jerk reaction that one of us will say, "You know what? I may not have made, should not have made that decision." Uh, one thing that Mr. Downs that you may want to look into is Asheville Airport. I think uh, went into an authority, and that's what kind of um, spurred this to move along. So you may want to contact somebody at the Asheville, um, Asheville Airport uh, to see what were some of the things going on there. Why don't we do this? Why don't we table it to the work session? If at the work session, uh, I mean, normally we don't, you know, take action at the work session. But instead of, um, you know, in the event that the county manager is able to get some more information um, I will make an effort to talk to somebody in Charlotte City Council. Um, or if any of you have good contacts and want to talk to somebody, let me know. More than happy for you to make the contact. Anybody know the senator? More than happy for you to make a contact. See what other information we can get. If we, at the work session, feel comfortable one way or the other, we could, make, we could amend the rules and proceed at that point in time. I feel comfortable with that. And I, I think the discussion that we're having tonight is good and healthy. Um, um, you know, we, we do need to understand more about it. So, yeah, I'm in agreement with what you're saying. Okay. In that case, um, I will make a motion to table this until our May work session. So, second, yeah. Okay. There's a motion and there is a second. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of tabling this, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, um, and I agree with you. I mean, I think having these good 
good discussions or it's good for all of us and it's good for the community to try to really make sure we understand what's going on in the region um, next we have appointments to the boards and committees first up um, from juvenile crime prevention council i accept a motion to remove mark antozic from the jcpc roster and thank him for his service so moved second have a motion a second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed okay uh, I need a motion to appoint Mike Plowman to the Active Living and Parks Commission to complete a three-year term ending on January 31st, 2016 as the Senior Center's Advisory Council Liaison Representative, including an exception to the service on multiple boards provision of the appointment policy. So moved. Second. I have a motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, I accept a motion to appoint Mary Whitman to the Home and Community Care Block Grant Advisory Committee to complete an unexpired term ending December 31st, 2013 and an additional two-year term ending December 31st, 2015 as a consumer representative. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, at this time, concerning Nursing and Home Community Advisory Committee, accept a motion to reappoint Sylvia Curry Johnson to the Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee for a three-year term ending March 31st, 2016, and a motion to reappoint Karen Gabbert and Leroy Diebler to the Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee to, for three-year terms ending April 30th, 2016. So moved. Second. The motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, next, uh, Food Policy Council. Um, da, 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 da. Motion to appoint Brenda Johnson, Food Production, Lynn McDougall, Fleming, Food Production, and Frank Fiorella, Food Distribution, to the Food Policy Council for three-year terms ending December 31st, 2015. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next one, motion to appoint Megan Poole, Medical Industry, to the Food Policy Council for a three-year term ending December 31st, 2015, and I would like to acknowledge that that is my daughter. So moved second. and so moved. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, hey, motion to appoint Aaron Bayer, medical industry, to complete an unexpired term ending December 31st, 2013. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And a motion to remove Jane Henderson, Kate Brune, Andy Do Audie Dover, and Tina Farmer from the Food Policy Council roster and thank them for their service. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And under reports, uh, we have a number of reports, EDC's quarterly report uh, for the first quarter of this year. We also have um, monthly reports on building activity, CDBG monthly report for February. Um, we always like to make a request from anybody that's interested to serve on our many county boards and committees. Um, I, I do at the end of a meeting, you know, we've been going on for a few hours, kind of rush through who's getting appointed to those boards, but I do want to say that it's extremely important for us to have people in the community to serve on these boards and to take an active role in your community. So please look um, and find a committee. Um, we will be happy to help you find committees to serve on. Um, next up we have, let's see, uh, updates from commission members who serve as liaisons to municipalities and or various boards and committees. Anybody have any updates? Um, we've met with the MPO, that, that group's moving along. We're working on a memorandum of understanding um, for the lead agency, and we should get that done next week. Um, WASAC is proceeding with their um, uh, project out at the uh, waste treatment plant with their sludge removal incineration. Um, it's kind of interesting, the things we learn about. And I was trying to think, I thought there was something else I had done this month. But um, any general comments by board members? Yes, I'd like to make some comments. Um, planetarium, I, I tell you, I think it's a great project. It, there is the STEM out there. I was talking to uh, some people out at Central Cabarrus, and the belief is that a staff member would be able to an additional staff member would be able to um, perform the services that need to be done, and I think it would be an asset that we need to look at during the budget process. Uh, 
in, in the long run, it will help not only Cabarrus County schools, but uh, schools outside of Cabarrus County. And one of the questions that I believe we had was how do the could school could kids get to the planetarium without um, interrupting the day to day activity of Central? And they can. Uh, the the idea would be uh, it, it's interesting because not only would it be an educational tool for our children, but the kids at the school could be used as um, um, guidance to take them through the process. So docents, guidance. Um, but yes, that, that can be done. So I think that's something we need to look at. The second thing is last this past Saturday at Franklis Park, uh, big kudos needs to go out to Perry and Ben. Uh, Londa has already gone, but um, the Cabarrus Literacy Council had their fun run, which was, I think I made the announcement a couple of weeks ago, and uh, over 350 people uh, participated in the run, and an additional 75 volunteers were out there and helping out with the activity, so it was attended by about at least 420, 430 people. Um, it was great opportunity. Uh, in fact, it was there were so many people there for the fun run. There was one of the persons um, was driving up was complaining that well, who in the world would schedule a fun run when there is a soccer tournament and a softball tournament going on at the same time? Um, I am plowed, pre pleased that our county manager survived the walk because um, he had his grandson walking. He started out with his wife and ended up probably five or ten minutes ahead of her. Um, so, <laughs> so, but it was it was well attended, and they raised a tremendous amount of money um, through hard work and efforts. Uh, Mrs. Wesen Reed was there, uh, Mrs. Ur was there, Susan Webster did a tremendous job from the Literacy Council. So that a group of ladies uh, and gentlemen uh, worked hard to making that a successful effort. That's it. Other comments? Any general comments? Okay, I want to. The reason I wasn't out there, I was getting sunburned instead. Um, over at Lowe's, actually, they were very kind, and I want to give a shout out to Lowe's and the CCBIA. They did a masonry pre skills competition, had students from Rowan County and Cabarrus County. I find it fascinating. You're used to this, I know, Commissioner Burridge, but I find it fascinating to watch somebody build a wall because it's not a talent that I have. But. They had a certain, they got a picture and that's what they had to build. They started, they, you know, told them to start at nine o'clock. From nine to 12, there was not a word from the competitors. They were all very busy at work. There were a number of CCBIA people there helping to mix the mud and haul it around and everything else. And um, the Lowe's provided prizes. The top prize winner got like $200 worth of tools, a wheelbarrow that my husband now covets. And, um, nice levels and everything else. Um, and actually the number one uh, first place winner was Mr. Suggs from, Commissioner Suggs' son from Mount Pleasant came in first. Uh, Mount Pleasant came in second. And I hope it was, I think it was Cox Mill came in um, fourth or fifth. So it was a really good day. Um, it was nice out there and the, the groups worked real hard. So appreciate people that come out and I mean that was a whole thing that they did to um, help the students get ready for their skills competition. The other thing I want to mention is save the date, celebrate Small Business Week in Cabarrus County. Um, there's a Small Business Resource Fair on Wednesday, May the 15th from 11.30 to 3 at the Governmental Center. It is free, free, free. Tons of business information in one location, booths, guest speakers, lunch provided. I'll do that. Uh, Rowan Cabarrus Community College is part of that. So um, I don't know if this is on our website or what, but we would like to promote um, Small Business Resource Fair for anybody that's interested in starting a business or any resources that you need. We know that the way the economy is going to grow is by an entrepreneurial spirit and people starting their own business. So if there are no other comments uh, from the board, at this time, we do need a motion to go into closed session as authorized by North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A-4, 5, and 6. And we would ask Mr. Cox to come in. No. no? Sorry. You were here. I'm used to you coming in. No. We don't need anybody else to come in. Just, just Rich. Just Rich. Okay. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? So moved. Uh, 
Second. Thank you very much. All those in favor say aye. 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 And thank you much, very much to everybody. We're adjourned. <laughs>